Welcome to a lesson on pairs of angles. More specifically, we'll be talking about complementary, supplementary, and vertical angles, as well as solving problems involving pairs of angles. Let's first talk about adjacent angles. Adjacent angles share the same vertex and share one side but do not overlap. So looking at this diagram here, angle one and angle two are adjacent angles. Well, remember we can identify angle one as angle ABC and we can identify angle two as angle CBD. And these two angles are adjacent angles. I also want to point out there's a third angle sketched here. It would be angle ABD and the measure of angle ABD would be the sum of the measure of angle one and angle two. Looking at the second diagram here, angle three and angle four are adjacent angles, which could also be identified by angle EFG and angle HFG. Remember, when identifying an angle using this notation, it's important that the vertex be in the middle. Complementary angles are two angles that add to 90 degrees. Looking at the angle here, formed by the two black rays, notice this little square here indicates it's a right angle, which means it measures 90 degrees, and angle five and angle six are two adjacent angles that form the right angle, and therefore angle five and angle six are complementary. Supplementary angles add to 180 degrees, so if the angles were adjacent as we see here, they would form a straight line, and therefore are also called a linear pair. Angle seven and angle eight are supplementary angles. The last special pair of angles we'll take a look at are vertical angles. Vertical angles are two non-adjacent angles found by intersecting lines. So looking at this diagram here, notice that angle one and angle two are adjacent angles, but number one and number three are non-adjacent angles formed by two intersecting lines, so angle one and angle three are vertical angles, and angle two and angle four are vertical angles. And all vertical angles are congruent. So angle one is congruent to angle three, which means they have the same measure. And there's a couple ways of indicating two angles that have the same measure. One way is by the number of arcs. So if I use one arc for angle one and one arc for angle three, we know they have the same measure. And angle two and angle four are congruent. So again, using the arc method, I could use two arcs for angle two and then two arcs for angle four, showing that those two angles are congruent. The other way to show that two angles are equal in measure would be to use hash marks or tick marks. So if I want to show that angle one and angle three are congruent, I would put one arc for both, and then put one hash mark through this arc and one hash mark through this arc, showing those two angles have the same measure. And then for angle two and angle four, I would also use one arc, but I have to use two hash marks here and two hash marks here to show that those two angles are equal in measure. Now let's go and take a look at some problems to reinforce these special types of angles. Here we have two intersecting lines and therefore two pairs of vertical angles and we're asked to determine the measure of each angle. Since we know these two angles are vertical, they must be equal in measure and we can use this information to determine the value of x. Since they're vertical angles, x plus 16 degrees must equal 4x minus 5 degrees. So we'll go ahead and solve this for x, subtract x on both sides. So we'd have three x minus five equals 16. Now I'll go ahead and add five to both sides. Well, if we add five to 16, we'll have 21. Now if we divide both sides by three, we know that x must equal seven. So if x is equal to seven, this angle here, would be seven plus 16 degrees or 23 degrees. And therefore, because these angles are vertical angles, this angle here must also be 23 degrees, which we could verify by subbing in x equals seven here if we wanted to. Now the remaining two angles are also vertical angles. So this angle here would equal this angle here. So to help us determine the measure of these last two angles, notice that the angles along this line here would be linear angles and therefore supplementary. So if this is 23 degrees, then this angle here must be 180 degrees minus 23 degrees. 
So that's going to give us 157 degrees. If this angle is 157 degrees, then so is this one here. Let's take a look at this last problem based upon this diagram here. The first question is name one pair of vertical angles. So we're looking for two angles that are formed by two intersecting lines that are not adjacent angles. So this angle here would be a vertical angle with this angle here. So we can say that angle I N J and angle M N L are vertical angles. The next question asks, name one linear pair of angles. So if we take a look at this line here, the two angles that form this line would be angle I N M and angle M N L. Notice that the linear pair would also be supplementary. Next, we want to name two complementary angles. Remember, complementary angles have a sum of 90 degrees. And since these two angles here form a 90 degree angle, angle I N J and angle J N K would be complementary. Next question, name two supplementary angles. And since we already mentioned the linear pair of these two angles here are supplementary, let's see if we can find two more supplementary angles. Again, referencing this line here, we could say that angle I and K and angle K and L are also supplementary because together they form a straight angle. And for this last question, it says given that angle I and J is 61 degrees, find the measure of the following four angles. So if angle I and J is 61 degrees, that would be here. Let's see if we can find the measure of angle J and L. Well, angle J and L and the given angle form a straight angle, and therefore they're supplementary. So angle J and L would be 180 degrees minus 61 degrees, so it would be 119 degrees. We're asked to determine the measure of angle K and L, which is here. We'll notice that angle K and L and angle K and I are supplementary and form a straight angle. And angle K and I is 90 degrees, therefore angle K and L must also be 90 degrees. And then angle M and L, M and L is here. What's well, a vertical angle with the given angle, therefore angle M and L must be 61 degrees. And the last angle is angle M and I, which is this angle here. Well, angle M and I and angle L and M are supplementary, and so we had just said this is 61 degrees. Angle M and I must be 119 degrees. The last thing to mention here is notice that M and I and angle J and L are vertical angles and therefore they're equal. And we found the measure of angle J and L in part A. I think we'll stop here for this video. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching.